As many of you are aware, Kenya is set to host the Commonwealth Women Affairs Meeting from 16th to 20th of September 2019. This meeting will therefore be able to, one, understand the Women Affairs Minister's meeting. It is our intention that the information about the one meetings will enable stakeholders to appreciate the importance and contribution of such meetings in advancing gender equality and empowerment of women and girls. You will also get a brief on the 12th WAM that Kenya is hosting, which will include the objectives of the meeting as well as the expected outcomes. In the spirit of partnership, you will also hear from the civil society in order to understand how civic voices will contribute to the outcomes of the 12th WAM. Lastly, and also important, information will be shared on the role of the media in the context of the 12th WAM deliberations. Ladies and gen gentlemen, we therefore consider your presence here as an affirmation of your commitment to an agenda that is close to our hearts, accelerating efforts towards the realization of gender equality and empowerment of women and girls. Allow me to also acknowledge the leadership of the Cabinet Secretary of our Ministry for her able leadership in driving this important agenda forward. One minute, I turn my pages. To the women in leadership across all sectors for diligence, commitment, and sacrifice in driving this agenda, we say thank you. To our development partners, civil society, private sector, the executive, the legislature, and political platforms that stakeholders across all entities, we value your commitment, time, expertise, and resourcing in complementing government's efforts and empowering women and girls. To our media, we acknowledge the important role that you play in society by reporting on issues of gender and advancing the gender agenda as we provide the platform where citizens can learn and engage. This meeting, you will hear many of us who have been working on this meeting referring to WAMM, W-A-M-M. -M. It comes with a very warm feeling, WAMM. It is the Women's Affairs Minister's meeting, and it's particularly important as the Commonwealth, a family of 53 nations, joins the global, the regional, and national communities to celebrate the 25th anniversary of what we have been working on, the Beijing Platform for Action, which was adopted at the fourth and the last World Conference on Women in September 1995. Today, we hear, 25 years later, it remains a powerful source of guidance and inspiration for gender equality and the empowerment of all women everywhere, not only in our 53 member nations of the Commonwealth, but the rest of the world. Paging plus 25. Our Commonwealth family of 53 member states at the highest level of leadership, that is our heads and our leaders, they continue to stay true and committed to the core values and principles of what we know as the Commonwealth Charter, which includes gender equality, human rights, democracy, and the rule of law amongst the 16 principles of the Commonwealth Charter. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the Sustainable Development Goals create the opportunity to inform the Commonwealth's priorities on gender equality which are for women in leadership, women's economic empowerment, ending violence against women and girls, and gender and climate change. These four priority areas were endorsed at the last 11th WAM in 2016 when ministers met in Apia Samoa. Those are the four years, as we have been told by the peers, 
Since the Commonwealth Women Affairs Minister's meeting was held, we have made remarkable progress in accelerating the realization of gender equality and empowerment of women and girls. The Commonwealth gender priorities to be discussed in the 12th forum coverage with over global process such as coverage with other global processes such as the Beijing Declaration, Platform for Action, Convention of Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, that is CINDO, Sustainable Development Goals, especially Goal Number 5, all which have served as a critical instrument for accelerating gender equality and empowerment of women and girls. As a country, this international human rights framework continue to inform our gender equality interventions. More specifically, the framework have served to reaffirm the government commitment to upholding a fundamental principle of that the rights of women and girls are integral, indivisible, part of universal human rights. As demonstrated through the various progressive gender interventions initiated in this country. We have it has been highlighted already what areas the Commonwealth pillars are, and we may, it, to me it fits very well with what we do in Kenya when we talk about women in leadership, women in economic empowerment, enabling <coughs> violence against women and girls, and the gender and the climate. Therefore, as mentioned by the, the head of gender sector, I think. When we look at all those pillars, what we do in this country, what we do at SDGs, I think we should define what gains are we making in all those thematic areas that we are pursuing at the national level, at the Commonwealth, where we are all joined the 33 or four countries, and then at the global level. Let me also uh, 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 focus on Kenya, where we are trying to appreciate what have we been doing on this area of gender equality and the women and girls' empowerment. Allow me to share with you how we have fared as a country in addressing the four gender priorities of the Commonwealth, which resonate very positively with our national agenda and our gender equality of, and empowerment of women and girls. First, on the, on the registrative front, fundamental changes have taken place through the supreme uh, law of our country. We are progressive constitution, as you all know, that guarantees equality and the freedom from discrimination, provides equality before the law, and the right of equal protection and the equal benefits. Over time, Kenya has also developed a robust registration and the policies that have transformed the socio, economic, and the political landscape, especially for women and girls, and other special groups that are faced with the marginalization. Key among this is the Vision 2030, which of course aims to make Kenya a middle income with a better quality of life for all Kenyans by the 2030, very much aligned with sustainable development goals. And in that, of course, the women and the girls are also expected to, be, to play a critical role and of course to enjoy that status of the Vision 2030. Gender equality and women empowerment is also ingrained throughout the medium term plans that is within our budgeting and of, of course aligned with the mid term plan. Right now we are mid term plan three. Today our interventions efforts are hosted by implementation of the government big four agenda. That will enhance gender equality and the empowerment of women. We must always ask, to what extent is the big four going to support gender equality and women empowerment? Or to what extent are girls and women also seeing opportunities brought by the, uh, the big four, which in my view are going to, uh, to boost, of course, the economic empowerment because we are targeting on manufacturing which means creation of jobs, universal health coverage, enhancing food security and nutrition, 
and supporting uh, affordable housing to the tune of 500 by the year 2022. Therefore, we must be able to put in our context as a country where we see all this effort that the government is focusing on, where is the principle of empowering women and girls.